What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Acres Scooby Marina. One of the questions I get asked all the time as an instructor is, hey, how much weight do I need? And there's so many different variables in there that I can't really tell you how much weight you need. But what I can do is give you a great starting point of how much weight you'll need, whether you're in freshwater or saltwater. Now for the purpose of this video, we're not gonna talk about the buoyancy of say a, an exposure suit, whether it's your wetsuit or dry suit, because in the end it comes down to more of a trial and error thing than anything else. But with that being said, we can get you a great starting point with two very easy formulas. Now, when we talk about displacement of water, we deal with cubic footage. And if you want to know what an actual cubic foot is, is basically it's a cube that is one foot by one foot by one foot. And I've actually got one drawn up here uh, just to kind of give you a good representation of what a cubic footage is, which is that measurement that we use anytime that we're talking about water displacement. A couple other things that we want to take into consideration, of course, is how much does water weigh per cubic foot and how much does a gallon weigh both for fresh water and salt water. And so cubic footage in itself, fresh water comes in at 62.4 pounds, salt water is coming in at 64 pounds. Now I mentioned the gallons because you'll see in the formulas we have to base everything off gallons. So when we talk about a gallon of fresh water, we're dealing with 8.34 pounds. And of course, a gallon of salt water comes in at 8.55 pounds. Now having that in mind, we can actually go in and actually do our formulas to determine what a great starting point for us is. The two formulas that we're actually gonna be using are these two here. And I'm gonna walk you through the process of each one. And then over here, I've actually already did the math for me to see what my good starting point was for how much weight I need both fresh water and salt water. So the first thing that we need to determine is how much cubic foot of water do we actually displace? And this is actually a very easy formula to do with some given variables. The first variable we're gonna talk about is the density of the average human being, which actually comes in at 8.3 pounds per gallon. So if I take my weight and I divide it by that 8.3 pounds per gallon, that's gonna give me a number, but I gotta take it one step further than that. I have to change that gallons over into cubic footage as well. So I'm simply gonna divide that by 7.48, which is my conversion of gallons of H2O into cubic footage. So once I type in all that information, that's going to give me how much cubic feet I actually displace. Now I can take that number or that uh, problem there and I can actually determine how much weight it's going to take me to offset the buoyancy of me or the lift of me if you will. So I take basically the weight of the water that I displace and I'm going to minus my weight from that and then I actually have to add in the buoyancy back of the cylinder itself. And we're gonna be using a cylinder that's around 500 PSI because when we're properly weighted, we should be able to hold neutral buoyancy during our safety stop. And the most average diver out there is gonna take his tank down to about 500 PSI before he resurfaces. So at that point, we wanna make sure that we got a good weight for that. So we're gonna use just a standard aluminum 80 for this, but you can use any cylinder out there as long as you know what the buoyancy weight of it is. But we're gonna use an aluminum 80 at 500 PSI to add back into that. So how does this look on paper if you used to do the numbers? Well, if I use my numbers, let's say I weigh 195 pounds. If I divide it by that 8.3, which is the density of the average human person, pounds per gallon and whatnot, and then divide it out by the 7.48 to convert it back into cubic footage, that's gonna come up to a 3.1409 cubic feet. And then for me personally, that's how much water I actually displace. Now, here's where we have to determine, are we gonna be in fresh water or salt water? Well, for the purpose of this video or the calculations, we're gonna be uh, looking at salt water first and then I'll show it to you in fresh water. So if I take the 3.41 or 3.1409 and times it by 64, which is how much a uh, cubic foot of salt water weighs, that comes in to uh, 201.02 pounds. And all I've got to do according to the second formula is minus my body weight from that. So if I minus 190 from that, or 195, I get 6.02 pounds. And then I'm going to add in the buoyancy weight or the positive buoyancy weight of that cylinder, which once again is aluminum 80, that's pressurized 500 PSI. That comes in at a 3.4 pounds. So if I add that to the 6.02, it comes up to 94 or 9.4 pounds is how much I need in salt water. To be exact, I dive between eight and 10 pounds, give or take if I'm wearing a three mil wetsuit. So the math actually works out pretty close to exactly what I need. Now, like I said, this is not gonna be exact for you, but this is gonna be a great starting point. 
If we did the exact same calculation, but we replaced the 64 with the 60 point, or 62.4, which is the weight of fresh water per cubic foot, it comes in that I actually need 4.39 pounds to get neutrally buoyant with a cylinder with 500 PSI in it. With that being said, a lot of people ask me why do I wear a steel plate even with a 3 mil wetsuit? Well, with a 3 mil wetsuit and a steel plate, I'm perfectly neutrally buoyant. That steel plate comes in right at that 5 pound mark, so it's a little bit overweight, but balancing it out with the buoyancy or the positive buoyancy characteristics of the 3 mil works just fine for me. But guys, as you can see here, this is just a starting point. This is not going to be exact for you. You can change out numbers. You can change out the 64 for a 62.4 if you're going from salt water to fresh water. You can actually change out this number here as well, which is the buoyancy characteristics of an aluminum 80 at 500 PSI. And I'll put a link down below to several other, or in the description, I'll put several other buoyancy characteristics of some of the most common tanks for you as well. So you can kind of factor that in as well based off what cylinder you use. But guys, I hope you can see the math is not too difficult as long as you have some given numbers, such as the weight of a cubic foot of water, the average density of the human uh, person, you know, whatnot. So as long as you got this, it's pretty simple to determine a great starting point for you. Now, once we've done this, it's so very important that you actually put this weight on and you do a proper weight test in the water, whether it's pool, the lake, the ocean, or whatnot. And how do we do that? Well, simply put, you're going to get in the water with all your equipment on. You're going to put your weight on as well. And then with a completely deflated BCD and hold it about three quarters lung volume of air, you should float about that eye level. When you exhale, you'll go under when you breathe back in you'll pop right back up that's when you know that you're properly weighted for say that almost one-third working pressure of the cylinder but guys I hope you enjoyed this video if you got any questions please put it down in the comment section below I'll put all this information in the description too as far as the average density of the human being and all that and that way it'll be easy for you just to plug the numbers in and hopefully it'll give you a good starting point as well but guys if you've got any questions please put it down in the comment section below if you like this video simply smash that like button for me and definitely share it as well guys as always make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter like us on Facebook pin us on Pinterest subscribe to us here on YouTube and as always guys we appreciate your business guys we really appreciate you watching our videos if you liked it make sure to give us a big thumbs up if you're not a subscriber simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications if you want to see some other cool videos make sure to click these links here they could be scuba tips they could be diving videos search and recover videos or gear reviews once again guys we really appreciate it